Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Ash and Rima from Mass Effect Odyssey and today we bring you yet another theory video uh, but this one is, well to us anyway, quite interesting. Uh -huh. So this one essentially revolves around a couple of comments that we had uh, I believe yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, Rima, would you like to read them out briefly? Okay, and obviously so these, these are quite up on the screen as well. Yeah, so. two of them are quite long so I'll, I'll paraphrase how we two of them but one of them was basically from David Hinkle he was the first one we read and it said that uh, his theory is the only way we could get through to the Andromeda Galaxy is that the Citadel opened a wormhole and Joker and the crew landed on a planet in the Andromeda Galaxy and that's the end sequence of the game after you do your, your choice and you see sh um, Joker trying to pilot the Normandy through some kind of like turbulence space turbulence and they land on like a planet um, of some nondescript jungle planet mm -hmm. um, his theory is that the Andromeda Galaxy, that is the Andromeda Galaxy that they've reached it. Um, and this kind of thought, mm, this, we were like, mm, this is interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of went from there and we were reading other comments. And actually, there were other people who had similar ideas. Um, so Jenks Angro said that, um, that he thought that because in Mass Effect 1, Sovereign tries to use the Citadel, it's uh, you know, proof that it's a huge, obviously a huge mass relay. They say that in the game. And then basically, it allows the Reapers to go between the Milky Way into dark space and who knows where else it can take people it's obviously a big mass relay that can jump really far distances and that it could be possibly used to you know kind of take on the plot to be honest mm. um, and then also uh, Rogue 103 also had uh, kind of a similar idea saying that the, the mass relay the Citadel mass relay was obviously built to kind of kind of you know teleport the Reapers from place to place um, and he kind of references us and talks about the booth animation that when the, the Citadel ring kind of like exploding kind of proved that the, it could be a portal to dark space and that uh, I think what they're all kind of trying to say is this was a portal to dark space the Citadel mass relay and it could be used to teleport people onto the Andromeda galaxy and further on and that they also kind of collectively their theories kind of merge together to say that possibly the explosion caused by the um the ending of Mass Effect 3 causes possibly a jump to the Andromeda Galaxy and maybe leading to the Normandy to go straight to the Andromeda Galaxy rather than just land in some mystery planet because they never say where it is. Mm -hmm. I know I paraphrase that a lot, but you can read the comments in full. We'll put yes. them on yes. screen. Yes, you'll be able to see it and see what they say and everything mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, so that's kind of the main part of it, but this kind of led us on to have a little bit. Um, now we kind of through an hour's worth of back and backwards and forwards last night in conversation uh it kind of got to so when they land on this planet after you're in the scene where you're trying to get away from like the blast effect of the explosion of the mass um of the citadel and like spreading yeah. to the mass relays and everything and then you end up on this random planet somewhere um and then obviously in the extend in the, in the extended cut you see, see the ship fly off but obviously nobody knows still where this planet is and then this moves into obviously credits and stuff like that and then you get the stargazer scene yeah at the end so. which always seems a bit random to me anyway um it was quite beautiful don't get me wrong it looks very nice uh, but it always seemed quite random to me uh, and this is where we kind of started thinking okay so we don't know well we know that in the new trailer the the person the main person we see in the trailer isn't the person we're going to be playing no and we figured who's this guy then and then yeah, we kind we've... of it kind of went from there really so yeah yeah we've we've had a inkling we're trying to figure out who this guy is for the last like few well basically a few months since since like we saw the trailer drop um and then they kind of announced very quickly afterwards that he isn't the main character we were trying to figure out who the hell he is because the way he's dressed and everything it, it kind of insinuates that he is um he is obviously he's n7 of some sort um <laughs> And then it was an idea that maybe, you know, he was a team of N7s because they all seemed very similarly dressed. Um, but we, we were, because I was trying to do a video of my own, and it may still come out because we haven't actually gathered any more information on it. But it was a video about um, who this main character could be. Um, and it kind of led me on to look onto things like N7s and stuff. And we've seen a few N7s in the game. Uh, including um, Admiral Anderson, Kai Lang, um, there's the engineer on, on Scion in Mass Effect 3, mm -hmm. there's also a few characters that have popped up that are being N7 graduates, but Shepard's the only one that uses the, the colours of grey and red um, 
he or she is the only character that it's not a, that is not a distinctive color of the M7 program. It's just the colors the shepherd seems to use. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's an alliance program, so it would actually be more likely that they'd be wearing blue of some sort. But they're not. They're all these characters seem to be wearing red and grey, um, and they have this N7 badge slapped onto them. So we were trying to figure out who this character could be, um, and we thought, well, it's not a main character. Uh, we kind of figured that we're still going on a theory that maybe the main character is still going to be part of this this Pathfinder Archon group that's going to be like an explorative group in the Andromeda Galaxy. So whoever these guys are, they're running around in grey and red armour, possibly with N7 badges on. And we're trying to like think, like, who could these people be? Because it's trying to make you think that it's very much like shepherd it's, it's, they're they're meant to be shepherd yeah and that's what we thought when we saw them we were like this person looks like they're just like just like a cowboy version of shepherd so that kind of got us thinking maybe maybe this is now this is let us start before we say any of our theories and stuff this is a huge theory theory yeah we're very much speculating on here this this um, is this is this isn't just a pinch of salt this is salt shakers all over the place so yeah, yeah. like salt salt mountains. shakers ready <laughs> so we figured whoever this person is is clearly trying to to emulate Shepard. Shepard is obviously very important. It would be very important in the Ma- Mass Effect universe. Not only was Shepard very important when he or she was still alive or around. After the events of Mass Effect Three, who knows what kind of legend Shepard actually turned out to be? Um, and it's very possible that Shepard became more of a kind of like a godlike figure or more of um, a hero figure, like a legend, more than so just like a soldier that everyone knew. And it was already kind of. In- kind of reference in Mass Effect 3 when James talks to Shepard and says that these people already think you're like beyond us mm-hmm. that Shepard was already going towards that direction um, so who knows what Shepard was going to be but these characters especially the character in the, the trailer kind of looked like they were kind of copying Shepard in some form either that or trying to emulate them in a a distinctive way yes um, so that kind of led us to figure out like who could this person be why would they be dressing like Shepard and then we thought well well, maybe they've <laughs> look, grown up hearing about Shepard all their life. Maybe Shepard is their hero. Stories of Shepard. Stories of Shepard and the Shepard mm-hmm. and the Shepard being all they've heard and maybe what Shepard represented, what Shepard looked like, maybe. And that kind of got us leading on to the next thing. So Ash, you can take your phone. Yes, so this leads us back to the uh, Stargazer scene at the end of the game, of Mass Effect 3. And... In all but one of the endings, and we'll come to the other ending in a bit, um, but in all mm-hmm. all but one of the endings, you'll have the Stargazer, which is voiced by Buzz Aldrin, and you'll have the child that he talks to. And they will have a back and forth, um, just talking about stories of how long ago it was. And it very clearly references how long ago these stories were regarding the shepherd, which you can A assume. very, very long time ago. Yes, the exact line <laughs> is it all happened so very long ago. And obviously, I'll, again, I'll put little screenshots of the subtitles and the screen up and everything uh, there as well. Uh, the conversation continues. The child says, when can I go to the stars? And this reference is then a quite... Not a quite a long paragraph, but it seems to in, insinuate in terms of exploration and all that kind of thing, which essentially is what Mass Effect Andromeda is going to be. So the full line is, our galaxy has billions of stars. So I'm going to have to lift my pad up here. Uh, our galaxy has billions of stars. Each of these stars can have many worlds. Every world could be, sorry, could be home to a different form of life, and every life is a special story of its own. So that's kind of obviously at the time hinting at the fact that they could go pretty much any way they wanted at that point uh, after everything's said and done after the Reapers and everything like that. Um, but we think, uh, and obviously it then goes on to, oh, tell me another story about the Shepherd. And I said, okay, one more story. Um, and this kind of leads back into our theory of uh, someone who's grown up hearing about Shepherd and hearing about all his heroics and probably growing up wanting to be like him and everything like this and obviously where the reference is there that it happened so very long ago and we're obviously thinking now that we definitely know now after sort of bits and pieces have come out from the trailer being released that it is set after the events of Mass Effect 3 so we can now have this person whoever they be grown up and trying to emulate Shepard so that's where we think potentially and it is still a theory that there could be a time between the child and the stargazer scene at the end of Mass Effect 3 rolling into the beginning of Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh-huh. We think. 
Yeah. That this is the point where we roll into the bit where we say, but. But well, no, no. Let's let's talk about we'll more. Hold of the, the butt for the moment. Well, yeah, we'll talk. We'll hold everyone the butt. We'll, yeah, we'll, everyone hold your butt. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the Stargate scene. So yeah, we there were some points that we kind of picked up. So there's a lot of references to exploration in in the in that scene mm-hmm. about all the stars and the billions of stars and the billions of worlds that each could be home. Each, each, the Stargazer says that each of these worlds could be home. Um, yes. And the first thing I kind of picked up that. This can't be a reference to the Milky Way galaxy because if it was a reference to the Milky Way galaxy, most of this, most of the Milky Way galaxy in Mass Effect Three is is explored. Everything's revealed. It's you know discovered. that from yeah. having the galaxy map that you could basically go into every galaxy system and you can go into every solar system and you can go into every like star system and everything's kind of displayed for you, mm-hmm. um, just by a simple scan. Now it also references the fact that it seems to show that there's no space travel in this point. It, it seems to say that the kid says. Um, when can I go to the stars? And, and the guy's like, very soon, my sweet. And and the kid's like, what will I find? And then it talks about like all the stars and stuff like that. Or, yeah, whatever you can imagine. What it, whatever you can imagine. It's almost yeah. like, it's like what I was saying, it's almost like what you'd say to a child now. Yeah. Like if someone, if a child said, what would I see? And it's like, well, you can experience anything out there. It's almost like it's a big unknown. And it's very strange that if it was after Mass Effect 3, if you manage to... Uh, if you manage to kind of save the galaxy, there would still be technology of some sort to kind of reference all this stuff. I can't believe that there wouldn't be technology of some sort that would tell you about space in general that has been explored for probably centuries before. Yeah. Um, and the last thing we thought of is this is we thought, well, then I was thinking maybe it's like, maybe it's obviously some kind of maybe Shepard is just a big giant fairy tale maybe it's not even true maybe Mass Effect 1 to 3 wasn't even a real story like it wasn't actually true maybe well in the game world anyway um <laughs> we all know it's true <laughs> <laughs> of course um but maybe it was like a giant fairy tale but and it's maybe just set on earth but this entire landscape doesn't look like it's human at all it's a big giant planet like not only is there a big giant planet on your in your landscape, there's also another there's like There's a planet moon. behind the planet. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even like a human like familiar. It's somewhere image. completely they're, different. It's somewhere completely different. Um, so wherever these people are, they're not on Earth. They're um, they're on some planet, and they're talking about unknown, unexplored space, which is very interesting mm-hmm. because. It just does not seem to fit with the narrative of Mass Effect One to Three. If this was after Mass Effect One to Three, it's very strange that it just um, it just seems very strange, um, yeah. and it also uh, we kind of talk about how the, the 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 reference to the Shepherd. It's no longer Commander Shepherd. It's the Shepherd. It's a very much like it's a fantasy figure. Yeah. Like like it's not even like they reference it like it's like not even, like they weren't even like a human person. It's like omnipotent almost. Um, and then the person says, "Okay, well, I can tell you one more story of some sort." Like there's more stories than just the the trilogy of Mass Effect One to Three. That there's been a lot more stories along the way. Yeah. Um, probably referencing to Shepard's past rather than Shepard's future because unless now here's this unless Shepard did survive in the destroy ending, <gasps> I guess you could I guess you could say that there would be more stories after the the ending of Mass Effect Three for Shepard. Yes. But also there would be stories before Mass Effect One for Shepard. Obviously, being born and doing everything up until the point of Mass Effect mm-hmm. One. Shepard did a lot of shit, so yeah. there would be a lot of stories to tell, I guess, of legends. Yes. And then I guess that led us to the point of um, these stories, according to this this stargazer, this is basically, it kind of seems to be like folklore passed down from probably generation to generation, more like kind of a folklore story. Whoever's been explaining these stories to them hasn't really kind of had an archive, there doesn't seem to be any information kind of detailed anywhere on electronical or even written form anywhere so it's kind of been handed down person to person so whoever's kind of been passing down the story it started from someone who knew Shepard I would say fairly well because the stargazer was telling the story of Mass Effect 1 to 3 in detail because Hmm. I assume the trilogy was basically the story they were telling yeah so we were trying to think who knew Shepard throughout Mass Effect 1 to 3 and maybe a little bit earlier who would know Shepard that well throughout the trilogy who's mm-hmm. been with Shepard the entire time and we only thought of two characters the entire way through mm-hmm. and that was uh, Anderson Admiral Anderson because Admiral Anderson would have known Shepard for a long time including the entire trilogy 
the entire way through. But? But the only character that's been with you basically the entire way through, living with Shepard the entire way through, knowing Shepard the entire way through, is Joker. Mm -hmm. Joker's the only person in the entire trilogy that's there moment to moment. Including the part of Mass Effect 2 where Joker plays his own part. Yeah. How would that person be telling any of this? Like, nobody else experienced that except Edie and Joker. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so essentially, well, not only do we think that the child could be this non-main character in the trailer, we also potentially could think that the stargazer that's with the child at the end of Mass Effect 3 potentially could be Joker. It could be could Joker. Be. Could be Joker. Could be Joker's descendant. Yeah. But someone we think possibly we feel like Joker someone is who is linked to the original crew yeah we think the Joker is a tie in between Mass Effect trilogy and maybe Andromeda and this kind of leads us on to um, on to the comment that was left by uh, David Hinkle who had the theory that kind of led us on this path that maybe maybe the Citadel exploding sent the shockwave in time and basically caused them to go through a wormhole landing in the Andromeda galaxy crash landing and the crew of the Normandy end up landing on this planet yeah and maybe they never like maybe they never got out of the andromeda galaxy yeah you see you see them taking off yeah you know but but they maybe came back again because they couldn't find their way out maybe these these characters in the trailer maybe they're basically the descendants of of the normandy crew and that could explain their like very very important choice of their in seven colors the fact that maybe we don't get to play th- these people is very important. Maybe we encounter them and maybe they're the link to to the entire trilogy mm. for us. But as we said, this is very much a theory and we, yes. we are we're talking on very much like... If our minds went wild, this is what came up. <laughs> yes, yeah. But, but and I believe this is where we can bring the butt in now. The butts can be unheld. You can unhold your butts now. Yeah. Because there is one thing that goes against this theory, mm-hmm. at least in part, which is the choice at the end where you chose not to make any choice. <laughs> which is essentially you turn around. Well, you do. You do. You make a make choice a of choice. shooting the light child in the face. I'm pretty sure a lot of people did that, though. Yeah, just for <laughs>, laughs more than anything. But, um, but yeah, you turn around, you shoot the light child, nothing happens. The, uh, the crucible doesn't go off, and essentially just goes to face the black with Shepard on the crucible slash their room, and that's kind of it, kind of thing. And then it cuts to another scene where it's a beacon flashing, and then it pans to go underground where you see a vigil like AI or VI of Liara, and she explains, you know, what's happened. I'm Dr. Liara Sony, and this is the story of how the reapers kicked our asses essentially um and yeah so that kind of leads into that one but obviously that would then mean that the big explosion at the end of mass Effect 3 didn't happen mm-hmm. the wormhole was never created the normandy never landed on a random planet at least not straight away Cause, well, at least not straight away because you were saying that with the other stargazer ending which there is a female one there is a female Which one. Which only comes with the ending if you choose to very, shoot very, the Very, very... I don't know what to think about the female it's one. Very only vague, part though. Of <laughs> yeah. It's very vague, but it seems... To, seems to kind of lead to the fact that they eventually did defeat the Reapers at some point. Just not at the point at the ending of the game. Yeah, so she... So, later um, on. The female Stargazer basically says that... The, the child says, is this, is this story really true? And she says, well, we're going by the archive. And the archive is basically... It seems to be Liara's archive of some sort, and the Stargazer says that we, using the information and the information handed down to us from the archive, we managed to keep our galaxy safe, and we were managed to free ourselves from the threat. Which seems to mean that they kind of use the Crucible schematics and everything that, like Liara, kind of put into this this like device mm-hmm. to defeat the Reapers in some sort. Yeah. So, potentially, the whole wormhole thing and the Normandy ending up on a planet in the Andromeda Galaxy is still viable with that ending, but it would happen much later on. Mm -hmm. Because going by the 50,000 year cycle of the Reapers, if they didn't defeat them or use the Crucible... It's the Crucible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, They didn't use the Crucible at the end of 3. Obviously, you choose that ending and nothing happens. Then you've got another 50,000 years to wait before they use it again, essentially. 
Mm -hmm. is what our thinking is. So it would have been at least 50,000 years later that they would have defeated the Reapers eventually by finding Liara's VI and the plans and everything like that and then defeating them. So that's what the female Stargazer ending seems to imply. That they did do it eventually, just not at the end of the game and the story that we know. Yeah, and there seems to be no reference to things like exploration, anything like that. That was in no. a lot. It's, it's a lot shorter than the the male Buzz Aldrin. I think the male so one's it? around about two minutes, maybe two and a half, and I think mm -hmm. the female one's maybe just over a minute. Yeah, it's a lot shorter. There's just basically quite a quick reference to this archive, and then it does have the same ending about like we can tell you one more story, but it seems to be that Liara was the one kind of sure, and and it seems to kind of this does kind of back up our other point where this person got their information, the, the woman telling you the story got the information, or the, this civilization got this information from an archive of Liara telling the story. Yeah. So they got the same information, the Mass Effect 1 to 3 trilogy, from Liara, which she basically archived the entire game for you. So this hand-me-down story that was in the male Stargazer must have been a hand-me-down of someone else telling the story as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that's like... I guess a point in our favour, but I think the one thing that's not in our favour is they do use the same landscape shot. Yes. In this. Yeah. So if it is no if it is in the Andromeda Galaxy Then It's in exactly the same place. <laughs> yeah, then theory poo pooed, essentially. Theory poo pooed. But we thought it was quite interesting and there are a lot of kind of links there we think that could Ours? lead quite tangibly from the other three into Andromeda. Oh yeah. But again, we say it's a theory, pinch of salt, all over the place. So, yeah. you know, this is just a theory, it's just our little theory connected to other theories that have come through in the comments in the last couple of days. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. But we'd like to see what people think of this theory. Oh, yes. We'd like to thank the people. Um, so we'd like to thank David Hinkle, Deng Sanro, and Rogue103, who all kind of contributed to us, kind of like, especially... David Hinkle, who kind of basically started... He kind of, he, he kind of got a light choo -choo. bulb like, going. Um, so. <laughs> so yeah, but let us know what you think of the theory. If you agree with it, you want to add any more onto it, any more evidence. Mm -hmm. You think in favour of it, against it. We kind of like to be proved wrong, because it would be nice. Yes. If, if you have anything to prove us wrong, go ahead. Um, or if you feel you have anything to back up the theory. Yeah, go ahead. Let us know as well. Yeah, because yeah, that would be nice. Yes. Yeah, let's make a definitive <laughs> theory. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> and see if we're right. Yes. Um, and... That's it. That's, That's it. This video yeah. done. Thank you very much for listening to this slightly more extended version of our theory episode. It's nearly half an hour long. Um, but we think it's worth it. So, um, so yeah. So let us know what you think. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and help us uh, support the channel to, and help us to grow by sharing the video too. And uh, we'll catch you again very soon in the next video.